Hi, I'm Andy Jones, your host for Art Talk, and today we are pea green with envy. I've been teaching people to paint for more than 40 years, and I've taught literally thousands of people to paint. And one of those people that I taught to paint is behind the camera today. So welcome, Stephen White. Hey, Andy. How's it going? It's going good. I am so glad that you were here with me again and that we didn't scare you off after painting some sunflowers together. But we're going to have a lot of fun today, and we are going to cover all things green. So let's get started with some art talk about the color green. You can use a pre-mixed green if you want to. We have several greens in our Art Talk kit. Or you can make a green by mixing yellow and blue together. So for today's lesson, we're going to use green straight out of the bottle and we're going to mix a bunch of different green colors. So we're going to get started and today's painting is a lesson in just using one color. Want to make sure that you understand the difference between monochromatic and just one color. In monochromatic painting, I would use one color, like say sap green, and I would lighten sap green with white or make it darker with the addition of black and do my entire painting with one color. What we're going to do today is a painting that's green, and we are going to use all different uh, colors of green. We're going to mix up a bunch of different greens and have fun with green. So I'm going to set this painting up here on the easel, and you can see that I have uh, my canvas ready to go. I've uh, uh, transferred my pattern onto the canvas and we will have a link in the description so that you can download this uh, design if you want to use that. But let's talk about uh, making a green. So Stephen, if you remember back to your elementary school oh, art classes, and what two colors do we need to mix together to make green? Is it a, a yellow and a blue? That's an absolutely perfect answer, Stephen. Yes. A yellow and a blue. It does not matter what yellow and what blue will make a green for you. So I can use, um, well, let's just go ahead and do a quick uh, illustration of this. So I'm putting out some lemon yellow and I'm also gonna put out some medium yellow. And then let's put out some Brilliant Ultramarine and a little Prussian Blue. So we've got two different yellows, two different blues here, and we are going to make some different greens. So if I start out, and you always want to start out with a lighter color that you're going to mix and then add your darker color to it. All right, best practices indicate that we need to clean our palette knife so that we don't contaminate our paint. So I'm gonna take my lighter yellow and I'm going to add a little Prussian blue to this and we will instantly make a green color. And that's a nice kind of Kermit the Frog green color. I was gonna say, what, what kind of green do you, would you classify this as? Is that's, this like Shrek? This is Kermit? This is... This is kind of, well, it may be a little bit more Shrek, but in the art talk world, it would be a yellow green color. And I can take my medium yellow, and this we're just mixing a little bit of color here. We're going to get into what we're going to paint with in just a minute. But take the same Prussian blue, add it to a different yellow, and we are going to create a different green color. So let's wipe that palette knife off again, pick up a little bit more Prussian blue and mix that in. You are not limited by anything except your imagination as to what colors you can make. So one yellow, two different blues, we've got two different green colors there. And we can take our light yellow and add some of our ultramarine blue to that. And we get yet a different color green. We can take our medium yellow and we can add some ultramarine to that. Oh, I probably added too much ultramarine there. Ah, but it's gonna be okay. Because we're just illustrating how many different greens we can get. And you can change how light or how dark these greens are by how much blue you add to them. So pretty quickly, you know, we've got 
two yellows, two blues. We've made four different green colors here in just a matter of minutes. But let's do a little something different. Let's go a little crazy here because we have aqua, which is a blue color, and we can make yet another different round of greens by using aqua. So add a little aqua to our lighter yellow color, and we make a very kind of tropical green. Add a little more yellow there. And don't be afraid to mix color. There's nothing that you're gonna do that's going to be something you can't undo. I always try to ask people when they're, uh, you know, afraid of something in painting. I'm like, think of what's the absolute worst outcome of this. You end up with a painting you don't like. Not really the end of the world, but that's the worst thing that can happen. You might get something great, and it is a lot of fun. So let's take some of our medium yellow and add a little bit of aqua to that. And again, we get another variation of green. So out of the greens that you've created thus far, uh, what would you say that your favorite is? Mm, probably this first one. Just because it's a, it, to me it's very familiar and it's a nice color. Um, but any of these you can use and they all have a place in uh, what we're going to be uh, talking about today and we can paint with any of these color greens in our uh, kind of our exercise of everything green. So I'm taking a little bit of lime green. So there is a green that's right out of our Art Talk kit. And let's change that green because that might not be what we want. So can add some Prussian blue to lime green and we will change that um, green, we'll alter the color. Now it's like a, a rotten lime green. Maybe there you a, a, a lime past its prime. As limes often get past their prime pretty quickly. There's nothing sadder than having like a bowl of lemons or limes that you are anticipating using and then before you know it, they're all kind of dried up and tired and you're like, I did not enjoy any of those. <laughs> If I took, just to illustrate this point, Thicket is kind of a, an olive green color, and I can take Thicket and we can mix it with some of our lemon yellow. And we'll get a whole different color green than we've gotten before, just because Thicket is a different uh, uh, base that we're starting with. So you can get that sort of color. Or, and these are all kind of medium to light greens, but for our painting today, we're going to need a dark green. So let's start with some thicket and let's add some very dark uh, Prussian blue to that. And we'll mix this up. And we'll add even a little more Prussian blue to this to make this super dark. And so you can easily see that our green is darker than what we started out with because we added a darker blue to it. It's also changed in temperature. So whereas we'll say thicket is kind of a warm green, what we've mixed up here has more blue in it and it is cooler, so we would call that a cool green. So no matter, green is generally considered a cooler color, because it has uh, blue in it, and you can still have differences in temperature from warm to green, even, I mean, warm green, cool green, within the same color, you can have warm and cool uh, versions of that. So lots of things to consider, but I wanted you to see pretty quickly as we start off, there's no limit to the number of greens that we can make. As you can see, I've got a nice clean palette here, no green on the palette just yet, but we're about to change that. So the main color that I'm going to have in my painting today is going to be uh, this beautiful lime green color. So that's, we're going full intensity, bright green, um, no slowing it down. So I'm gonna put out some lighter colors here. I'm gonna put out some 
lemon yellow, and some medium yellow. And we are going to do a little bit of palette knife mixing, and then we will probably do quite a bit of uh, brush mixing today, just changing colors as we need to. So I'm putting out sap green and Prussian blue here. And I have forgotten to put out some titanium white because we will need that for our lightest highlights. Alrighty, so we're gonna mix up, gonna mix up, we've got our medium green, so we're gonna make a nice, really, really dark green. So I'm going to take some sap green, which is a beautiful transparent green. And when you kind of thin that color out, you can see it's a really, really nice uh, shade of green there. And we're going to make it super dark. So I'm going to add a nice big chunk of Prussian blue to this sap green to make myself a very, very dark green color that is cool and lends itself to darker tones and shadows. Andy, we were talking about uh, filming this episode today, yesterday, and we mentioned uh, a lot of green characters in the media, pop yeah. culture. We've yes. already talked about Shrek, we've talked about Kermit. What well, else you got? Well, of course, the biggest thing that's green was, of course, Frankenstein. Oh, or I not didn't even Frankenstein, think about that. Frankenstein's monster. Let's, let's make sure that we keep that situated. Um, but uh, Frankenstein's monster was green. I'm trying to think of who else was green. The Jolly Green Giant. Mm -hmm. and, and, you, his, you, and his little friend Sprout. I was going to say, you told me about Sprout yesterday, and I was not familiar. <laughs> I was not versed in the, in the, the Green Giant lore. I don't... The mythos. Uh, well, I'm thinking, Stephen, you probably were not around when Sprout was around. Yeah, that's probably uh, likely. Because uh, Sprout came out in the mid-1970s. I was certainly not around. You certainly were not. Stephen uh, puts up with a lot of references from an, an older uh, counterpart here. So, I'm trying to think of what other, uh, oh, um, Oscar the Grouch. Oh yeah. So, you know, another great green character. Yeah. All right, so we've got a medium green, we've got a really dark blue green, and let's go ahead for fun and let's make a light green color. So I'm gonna start with lemon yellow. And instead of adding blue to make green, I'm simply going to add my lime green to that. So we're just changing our lime green a little bit. And let's not forget uh, the green hornet and the green lantern. Okay, now we're starting to talk my language here. <laughs> Are, I was gonna ask something and I'm gonna embarrass myself here. Are those part of somebody's metaverse? Is that what it's called? They, they probably could be. I, see, I don't know what kind of verse they are part of. Yeah, that, that's, that's for a different episode, okay. getting into the painting metaverse. Here. No, I don't necessarily know that we even need to go there. I, um, uh, a green character that, or green reference that comes to mind uh, for me is green eggs and ham. I do not like green eggs and ham. Sam, uh, I am. Th there we go. I couldn't remember the last part. I will not eat them in a house. I will not eat them with a the mouse. I will not eat them on a boat. I will not eat them with a goat. So, yes, uh, uh, Sam I am with his green eggs and ham. Remember as a kid making uh, my grandmother, for, you know, forcing her to make green eggs and ham, which of course she did and I instantly regretted that request. I was gonna say, we made green eggs and ham when I was in elementary school. They had it at school lunch and I remember specifically not liking it. It's, it's not appetizing. No, it doesn't look, it looks, kind of whimsical in the book, but then when you see it in real life on a plate, you're like, this looks diseased. This looks <laughs> well, like there's it's a problem. Certain foods should be green and certain foods should not. It's like when they tried to make green ketchup. Oh yeah. That was not, I mean, nobody wants their ketchup green. That's why we have relish. Exactly. You have, um, you have salads, you have fruits, you have things like that that are meant to be green. Ketchup is not one of the vegetables that's meant to be green. All right, so I am doing what I shouldn't do, but I am keep trying to lighten this color by adding a little bit of yellow here at the edge. And I think that's going to be good enough to get us started. I'm sure that we will brush mix a lighter green than that, but so we've got light, medium, dark green, which is what we need to get started with. And we are doing a painting today just to illustrate 
how you can paint everything with one color. So we're going to be doing a series of these, what we're going to call our color painting. So we've got a green painting. We'll be doing one with blues and one with reds and things like that. Spoilers. But, oh, or are they Easter eggs at this point? No, that's, that's just a spoiler. That's a spoiler. Okay. We're not hiding anything, are we? <laughs> got a pitcher and an apple and a background and I'm starting here in the middle of the background just applying my green. I'm going to try to stay out of the pitcher. And we're using a big brush to cover lots of area all at once. As I like to say, don't send a boy to do a man's job. Got a big area to cover. Go ahead and get a big brush in there. And it's okay if you cover a little bit of your uh, design that you've transferred onto your canvas. As long as you can still see it, you're going to be in fine shape. All right, so I've got like the middle of my canvas covered and the left side's going to be dark. So let's wipe our brush off. And let's do a little better job of that. Let's get a lot of that green out. And now we're going to pick up our really dark green color that we made. And we're going to brush that on. And we're moving kind of quickly because we want to have some time to blend our colors together. And the Folk Art Acrylics give you ample time to work with this, but you also don't want to move at a snail's pace which a snail could also be green. A snail could be green. We know that we have green Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. That's another great green character or characters. Yes, I only remember Donatello and Leonardo. I don't remember who the others were. Uh, Raphael and Michelangelo. Okay, Andy, well. they're we, artists. You should well, love this. I, know, I knew that we were covering all the Renaissance artists. You're going to call one of them Rembrandt, I bet. I don't know. No, Rembrandt wouldn't have been a Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle. It could have been. Uh, they, uh, I was probably aging out when they were becoming popular. We want to come in here and just blend our dark green and medium green together. And I'm finishing this up with some long light strokes, just back and forth. At this point, we're not worried about covering up the handle or anything? No, nah, I can still see where the handle is there, enough for me to go back and paint on it. I think probably the most uh, famous green character in today's day and age is the Incredible Hulk, right? Yes. Don't make me angry. He's got these uh, the gamma rays flowing through him. Yes. You wouldn't like me when I'm angry. All right, so now that we have talked about the Hulk, there was, of course, the She-Hulk, which was uh, more recent. I still haven't seen that. I haven't either. Well, then I we know, don't I have know, much to say about it, do we? I, I, and I was going to say, I know you're not surprised at that. Green characters are all over the place. All right, so we're just going to continue over here on the right side of our canvas with uh, the lime green color. And right around our pitcher and our apple. And as I move over there, I'm going to take some of this lighter yellow green and work that in. And we're just going to blend that together where those two colors meet. And we're just blending this in, softening our colors together. And then I'm going to finish up with some long, light strokes. And if something needs a little more blending, come back and do that. And then we can soften out any of those brush marks that might be bothering you. They don't bother me at all, but I know that some of you love everything to be smoothly rendered. All right, so we are going to pause for just a moment while this dries, and then we're going to come back and paint on top of that. I'd like to take a minute to thank Plaid Enterprises for sponsoring Art Talk. They are the makers of Folk Art Acrylics, which I absolutely love using. 
I've used this paint since I was a young tot, and now that I'm an old fart, I still use this paint. We have a 17-piece set that we've curated just for you. Ordering information is in the description below, and we also have great brushes for you. We have a seven-piece set of Folk Art Select Firm Bristle Brushes. These are absolutely incredible. I use them every time I paint. <laughs> And I've never done that in my entire life. Now, let's get back to our video. And we're back. So we have our green background that has dried and I want to give you a pro tip. If you're drying your painting with a hair dryer or a heat gun, make sure to let it cool down before you start painting on it again. Uh, sometimes people want to jump right in and if your painting surface is warm, your paint will grab and it'll dry really, really quickly. All right, so we're just gonna give this another little going over so that we can get a little more smooth, blended look here. So again, with the lime green, and we'll take some of our dark green color, and you can see it looks instantly so much darker. It's because we've got two coats going on, and we have none of the light color from the canvas shining through. So we're painting an apple today. Do you have a favorite green food? A favorite green food? Um, I don't know, probably a nice pasta with pesto. It's mm, a good choice. Yeah, love that. And what's your favorite green food? I think my favorite green food could be kale chips. I love uh, a good kale chip. I, I do like green apples. Um, well, and I, I also like green airheads. Okay. Yeah. Did you know that God didn't make little green apples? Andy, I don't know what and you're referencing right now. <laughs> and it, <laughs> it don't rain in Southern California in the summer. It's, it's an old song. I, I, I figured. <laughs> so, you know, any song I'm going to reference is going to be an old song. And it's, it's going to be a complete surprise to you. And sometimes I know that you secretly go check out these old references and other times you just... Try to let them slide. Well, when we make them during art talk, I have to look them up to put them in the video, right? <laughs> of course. <laughs> so who knows uh, what uh, great green references Stephen's going to have to be checking out today. I'm going to have my work cut out for me. Okay, so I'm putting a little bit more lime green over here on the light side. And uh, so I want to make one of the best uh, green references that I can and it's from a movie I'm not sure that Stephen has seen, which is Gone with the Wind. He certainly has not seen it. He has not seen it. Well, it's a cinematic um, masterpiece, and you have, to, you have to check it out. But Scarlett uh, is talking with Rhett Butler, and he is basically giving her the green light to uh, rebuild Terra and build another fancy house in Atlanta. And she goes, oh, I want to make everybody who's ever been mean to me pea green with envy. So that's the reference for being pea green with envy. And it's just a classic moment in the movie. While her sister in a little cutaway scene is bemoaning the fact that Scarlett's been married three times and she's going to die an old maid. So sibling troubles, you know, everything in Scarlett's world has been some sort of trouble but we are gonna to have to make sure that you do sit down and take in all the glory that is Gone with the Wind. Yeah, and eight hours later, I'll be able to report back to you after the movie's over. <laughs> yes, we, you know, being here in, based in Atlanta, we are all things Gone with the Wind, and uh, uh, Margaret Mitchell, the Margaret Mitchell house uh, is in Midtown Atlanta, and it was an apartment house when she lived there and wrote a tiny bit of Gone with the Wind, so. We do have that and, you know, Gone with the Wind is a pure classic, Steve, and I'm a little sad that you haven't taken that in yet. Uh, a green movie that I have seen is The Green Mile, but that's way less fun than... The Green Mile is way, well, I mean, you know, Atlanta burns and Gone with the Wind, so Green Mile, Gone with the Wind, uh, but that's a, a great green reference. Thank you for that. I've also seen uh, The Green Knight, which is a newer movie that came out. It's got uh, Dev Patel in it. Okay. It's a fantasy sort of thing. All right, cool. Dev's yeah. a great actor. Loved him in uh, Lion. Yeah. All right, so we are moving on with our green painting. So our background is done. We have set the stage for 
a green painting. There's no denying that. And we're going to take another quick break and we are going to dry this. So we are back once again and we are starting on our pitcher. So I'm going to begin with some lime green and we're going to put that over here on the dark side of our pitcher. Just establishing the outside edge coming all the way down and across the bottom. And we're gonna paint that on, filling it in. We're not painting the inside of the picture yet. And we're working that color on, coming around the apple. And what I'm going to do with this pretty thin application of green is I'm just going to brush mix a little bit of my dark green and some more Prussian blue. And we will begin to put our dark area on our picture. I'm leaving a little bit of a light edge to the left of this. And we're putting this on and we're going to blend it in. wipe my brush as I need to. If I'm moving color where I don't want it, I'm gonna take that excess color off the brush. I wanna soften this dark edge over there, but I wanna leave a little bit of that light to the left of that. All right, so we're beginning to develop our dark shadow area. And while we're doing this, we might as well go ahead and work over here on the right side and I'm picking up some lemon yellow and just whatever uh, dirty color is in my brush and it's making just a different shade of green which is going to be fun to put on over here. You can see that this light green is different than that light green which is what we want some variety in what we're painting because we don't want it to all be the same shade of green. And so we've been talking about some green characters. We mentioned a couple of green movies. Now, of course, Stephen is going to wow me with some green music. Oh, man. Uh, well, green tambourine, right? I mean, a classic. Yes, indeed. Very good, Stephen. <laughs> Love that. And uh, we can't forget uh, Tom Jones and the green, green grass of home. I would have thought that was Tom Waits, but thank you for uh, no, setting me um, straight there. Tom, no, it's not, not gravelly enough for Tom Waits. Uh, Tom Jones' voice is still in pretty good shape, whereas I don't think Tom Waits' voice is in good shape at all. All right, so we have a vase that has a medium green, a light green, and a dark green. So let's come back and add some more yellow to this and it's going to blend in and make a green color. Even though it's very close to the edge of yellow, it still falls into our theme of a green painting. And I'm putting a little bit more on and blending a little less in, starting to develop some highlight areas. Again, apply your paint with pressure, then you can wipe your brush and use a lot less pressure as you blend. Stephen remembers that from our sunflower lesson. Yeah, <laughs> he says nervously. <laughs> there is no quiz, Stephen. You're perfectly fine. All right, so then we're going to take some of our dark green color and some more Prussian blue. And we're going to make our darker area on our vase even darker. Look at that. Super, super dark green over there. Dramatic. Well, that's what you got to have. You've got to have some drama. Uh, in your painting. You don't necessarily have to have it in your life, but in your painting it's a pretty good thing. And we just pick up some more paint as we need it. Pat that on. Blend it in. A 
you want to make a little bit of an area to indicate that the base has a narrow neck to it. And I'll pick up a little bit of my lime green color just to soften those edges. And I'm more concerned about color and value placement than I am about finely blending this. And again, we'll take some more lime green and soften this middle value area. And that's about all I'm gonna do on the front part of the vase for right now. So let's go ahead and get some of the interior of the vase filled in with some color. And we're gonna start with our medium green in the middle of the inside of this jug or vase. And we'll shade the bottom part with our dark green and Prussian blue. I ought to start having a green counter in the corner for every time that we've said green so far. <laughs> that would be embarrassing and funny. How about I just put it up right now for uh, as, as many times as we've said green thus far. Okay. We don't have to do it again. We don't have to say green again? No, we don't have to show the, the counter again. Let's just, <laughs> we'll, we'll put it in there as soon as, uh, right. Well, since we're, we've talked right more about, uh, well, you know, every time we talk about the green counter, uh, we're adding another, another green to the, to the total number. Oh, it's a paradox at this point. Stephen is, um, uh, one of our video editors here and is more comfortable on the side of the camera he is now than he was when we did our little sunflower painting. Okay, let me just offer you, no, no, no. I'm just gonna offer you a tidbit, a tidbit of advice. So I know with his uh, editing wizardry, he's gonna turn this into something fun. So we've got uh, some dark indicating that we are we have the inside of our vase. And we're going to shift now to a uh, little baby number eight flat. And we're going to work on um, the handle and the rim of the vase. So we're starting it again with our medium value, which is our lime green. And we are going to paint in the handle of our vase. And we're not using any special or fancy brush strokes or anything with this. We are simply painting in the handle. Now, we're gonna shade and highlight this handle again. We can use our dark green or our dark green with some Prussian blue in it. All right, so we're going to shade where our handle attaches to the pitcher, and we'll do that at the top and the bottom here. And then we'll add some dark shading on the handle. If we put too much dark shading on our handle, it's going to completely disappear into the background and that's not our objective at this point. Andy, how do you feel about matcha, green tea? Oh, not now, not ever. Yeah, I'm the same way. I am, I'm, I'm a very good southern boy and we drink our iced tea sweetened. Oh. We don't drink it green. Well, maybe I should be more of a southern boy then. I don't like any tea, that's just my thing. Oh, I mean, I grew up, you know, with uh, uh, sweet tea, as Dolly Parton says in Steel Magnolias. It's the house wine of the South. So I'm adding some lighter green highlights on there. We're just kind of patting those on. And now we're gonna add, um, I'm gonna start introducing a little bit of white into some of my very light greens. So we're making them even lighter in value. And these very light greens will really pop because we haven't used any white in the painting up to this point. So those really kind of show up there. And we will, let's just grab another 
brush here and we'll take in some of our very light yellowy green color and we'll add white to it and we'll come back and we'll lay on some brighter highlights here and we're not going to blend these in we're going to let these highlights rest on top just like that and we're going to come back with our little number eight flat and we've got kind of the rim of our uh, pitcher to put on there Andy, I just thought of another green character that I know you won't know. Okay. So for once, the tables are turned. <laughs> oh no. And I'm I... gonna subject you to a reference. Okay. You ready? I'm okay. ready. So there's a character in a show called Teen Titans called Beast Boy, and he's this green little alien guy, and he can turn into different animals. He can like shape shift, so. Okay. But they're always green every time. So like he might be like a green elephant, he might be a green gorilla. Uh, and okay. he's, he's like a superhero. All right, so all green, but a much newer version of Zach and Jaina, the Wonder Twins. How do you do this? <laughs> Are you surprised that I know the Wonder Twins? I only Twi I only know the name Wonder Twins, okay. but I don't know anything. We about have them. to do the Wonder Twins activate. Is that what they do? Form of something, and then shape of something else. They Usually call it out. Water. Oh, they tell you exactly what they're turning into. That seems like a lot of work. I think Beast Boy just does it. Well, this was this was earlier, so now things okay. might be easier for the... the Shape-shifting technology has yes, advanced. Yes, it's, it's advanced. I mean, before, you know, you just had the Wonder Twins. Well, they were part of the uh, Justice League. Oh. <laughs> Again, I'm surprising, Stephen, that I know okay. the Justice League. Well, it's League. the same universe then. I think Teen Titans are also in the DC, you know, Justice League universe. I we talking about metaverses earlier. <laughs> talking about stuff I have no comprehension of. Um, I think when I knew the Justice League, they were just a cartoon. There wasn't a there wasn't anything else attached right. to it. Right. All right. So I'm going to take a little bit of dark color and maybe just trim this rim down a little bit. Speaking of the Justice League and green, we do have the Green Lantern who we talked about. Yes. But there's uh, another member of the Justice League that's green that people don't talk about as often and that's Martian Manhunter. Do you know him? Do you not know Martian Manhunter? He, he's interesting. He can turn into like goo and like get into tight spaces and he can also shape shift but he turns into other people rather than animals I think. Okay, that's getting very complicated for me. Sorry, there will be a quiz later. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we've got a rim on our vase, we've got the inside of our vase done, and now we need to paint a little green apple, which we already know that God didn't make little green apples, and it don't rain in Indianapolis in the summertime. Music, old music used to have like really deep and meaningful lyrics. All what right. does it have now? I, I don't know. I just... <laughs> I was about to do my Britney Spears <laughs> impression and that would have terrified everybody. I think it's funny that you think Britney Spears is new music too. Well, I, I won't say that, I mean, it's, it's not that new, but I think that if I'm not mistaken, and, and please correct me if I'm wrong, did she and Elton John just not release a remix? I didn't even know that they knew each other, Andy. This is, you're, okay. you're already out of my league. Well, I heard this the other day that they were doing kind of either a mashup or a duet of um, Tiny Dancer. And it was actually pretty good. I was surprised that I liked it and wanted to listen to it more than once. Because I would have normally been a purist with uh, Elton John's Tiny Dancer. Andy, you know what I just realized? I don't know what you just realized. Sorry, this has nothing to do with what you were talking about before. Okay. Uh, we're, we're, we're doing all this green stuff here, uh -huh. and I'm going to have an opportunity to green screen your shirt into anything, really. Okay. I cannot wait to see what green screens, what I'm, maybe it'll be all the green characters that we've referenced today. It could be. Could be anything. I might make you wear like a space shirt. Well, speaking of green and space, 
what about kazoo? And Stephen is giving me this sheepish- Kazoo? It's either kazoo or gazoo. I'm not 100% positive, but it is the little alien spaceman who um, tormented Fred Flintstone. Because nobody could see him but Fred. I, 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 you, I don't you, know. You don't know that. Okay, well, that is something that you will have to go check out. Is Marvin the Martian green? Marvin is black. He's black. Uh-huh. Okay. Um, you know, I just saw in the news that there's a green comet that's, like, coming by Earth February 1st. I'll have to make a note of that. This episode will probably be released before or after that comes out. So. Okay, is that the comet that lost part of its tail? I don't know. I don't know either. All right, so I'm going to start to develop a lighter area on my apple. So I picked up some white and yellow on my brush, and you can see as I put this on, that white and yellow instantly turns into what, Stephen? Uh, green. Is it light or dark? Light. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> thought I had a safe answer with that one. Yes, you did. And I know I, you all don't have the um, enjoyment of looking at Stephen's face and seeing when he is on something or when he's terrified that I've just given him some that, really yeah. bizarre um, reference. That was pure anxiousness, that answer. Well, it was, it was fine. So it's a, it's a pale green. And I'm adding some more white. And as I blend that in, it becomes what again, Stephen? Green. There you go. So that's a very, very, very light value green. So it, it, we can get away with doing that on this painting. So I'm going to take a little bit more of our lime green and just make sure that we've got some darker color going on our apple because we need the value to create the form of the apple. If you don't have changes in value, then whatever it is that you're working on is completely flat and we want our apple to look a bit more three-dimensional. So we're going to come in, put some dark color over on this side of the apple and give that a little blend in, just kind of softening things so we don't have harsh edges. That looks nice. Well, thank you. I do try. We'll put a little bit more dark down here light pressure to blend that in. Now, our apple does have a little uh, cleft or a divot in the top of it where our stem joins it. So I'm going to take this dark green color and we're just gonna put a little bit of that on there so that we make a little depression in the top of this apple. And we're softening that upward a little bit. And for fun, we'll take some light yellow, lighter yellow green, and we'll just add a couple of little accents on this apple. And we're going to take a pause here and we're going to dry this so that we can do uh, some cast shadows next. Before we cast a shadow, we need to have something there uh, for the shadow to be casting. So I'm going to take some of my dark green on my number eight flat brush, and I'm going to quickly paint in a little apple stem. So our stem's gonna start right at the bottom of our apple and come up, and then we're gonna give it a little end, just like that. Okay, so now we've got a stem in our apple. So our stem is going to cast a shadow. So I'm going to thin down my dark green because I don't want my shadow to be as dark um, as the stem itself. I was almost gonna say we don't want it to cast such a dark shadow, but then that's a reference that, have you seen the show, the I, TV show, Dark Shadows? I, I haven't seen the TV show, but I've seen the Johnny Depp uh, movie from like yeah. 2009 or yeah, whatever Yeah, we, we don't even want to imagine that that yeah. existed. All right, so I'm going to start right next to the stem and just put a little extra dark color that's very transparent right on the apple. And you can see that we've got a little bit of a cast shadow going on there. It's much clearer here on this one. And let's uh, pick up a number 12 flat brush and we'll take a little bit of water on our brush and we are going to once again 
thin down our dark green mixture and we're going to give a little cast shadow that's going to start uh, kind of where our apple would be casting the shadow onto our pitcher. Then we're going to set the brush right next to the apple and we're going to just cast a little shadow like that. And then we will come back in and give it a little bit of extra attention. I'm actually going to take the canvas off of the easel. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Freestyling. <laughs> I'm freestyling, but I also know that Stephen can handle this without any problem, because I'm going to hold it where he can get a good view of that. And I want to just put this dark cast shadow right next to that apple. And then we're softening that out. So you quickly get a quick cast shadow onto the jug. Now let's do some resting shadows uh, that kind of fade off into the background a little bit. They're going to come under the jug and under the apple. So again, I'm using my number 12 flat. Got my brush damp, strong color on one side of the brush, almost no color on the other. And once again, we're going to come right next to our jug. Is that good for you, Stephen? Yep. There you go. Coming right underneath our jug. And sometimes it's good to take your painting off the easel if it's really difficult for you to get into a specific area. And I want to make sure that I was doing a good job coming right next to the apple. What kind of green drink do you think they have in this jug? in this green world that we're painting. I would like to think that they probably have some chartreuse in there. Is that a drink? Chartreuse is not only a color, it is a green liqueur which was made by the monks in chartreuse. Oh. Yeah, so learning a little something about the monks and their cocktails. The more you know. <laughs> um, I like to think that it is a uh, green Gatorade. No, that's that's too common. It has to be something extraordinary. Okay, fine. Green Powerade. Maybe. I don't even know what uh, flavor Green Powerade is. Probably like lemon lime. Yeah. It's funny. I think of Sprite as a green drink, even though it's clear. It just comes in a green bottle. <laughs> yes, that's true. We are brainwashed by advertising. Did you know that there used to be a little animated person that advertised Sprite? No. It was also his... known as Sprite? His name was Sprite? His name was Sprite, I yes. was going to guess his name was Spritey, so yeah, it wasn't far little, off. Like a little elf. Kind of, kind of uh, not, I mean, he wasn't unfriendly looking, but he also looked like um, he would have been a big mischief maker. All right, so now we have put in a... Uh, we've done cast shadows and now we've done resting shadows and I think that is going to bring to a close this very very green um, art talk lesson. Well Andy I think we have shown everybody that it actually is easy being green. Well Kermit I appreciate I mean Stephen I appreciate that very <laughs> much so want to thank you all for joining us today again I want to let you know that a downloadable design is available. There is a link in the description below. If you want to subscribe to Plaidcraft's YouTube channel and make sure to hit the notification bell so that you can find out every time we upload a new video. If you'd like to leave us a compliment, you can email me at art underscore talk at platonline.com or you can leave a comment below. So thanks very much for being with us and we'll see you again on the next episode of Art Talk.